Hi and welcome to your next lecture in computer science for everyone. This time we're going to be talking about the next part in the parts of a computer, which is the CPU or central processing unit. The first thing we're going to be seeing here is a square that will represent our processor. It's going to have a bunch of parts, so stick with me and let's go through them. The first part of a processor is what will let it communicate with other components receive data from other components and send data to other components. And this is controlled like all the other parts of the processor with the, uh, the control unit. So as the name says, the control unit is going to control everything that the processor does. So the IO management unit will send data to the control unit or the control unit will tell the IO management unit to um, get the data from the processor and send it away. Then we have the instruction unit. The instruction unit is what actually performs the calculations and comparisons in a processor. So this is the actual part does most of the work. It has two main, well, three main parts. Two of them are very similar. The ALU and the FPU are the similar parts. And then registries is the other more different part. Let's go through what they actually mean. ALU and FPU stand for Arithmetic Logic Unit and the FPU stands for Floating Point Unit. ALU, Arithmetic Logic Unit. This part, this part is going gonna, gonna to perform arithmetic operations in whole numbers such as 5, 3, 2, 10, 1 million. Um, and also it's going to compare numbers. It's going to think is 5 greater than 3 or 10 equal to 10? And then FPU is floating point unit. So it's going to deal with obviously floating point numbers. Um, this part is depicted as bigger because floating point number calculations require more power because of the added complication of having all that precision in floating point numbers. Um, and both of these parts use the registries. Registries Th there are a few registries and they hold stuff like data currently being used or instructions currently being executed and they are inside the instruction unit so that the ALAU and the FPU can access them really quickly. So that's why registries, ALU and FPU are all put together so that the ALU and the FPU can access data stored in the registries really quickly. Something I mentioned is that instructions are also stored in the registries. What do I mean by this? The processor can only do one thing at a time. So the processor can store a number in a registry. It can add one number that it's currently working on to a number in the registry. It can compare the number it's currently working on with a number in the registry or something like that. It can only deal with one number at a time. That's why we have registries, so that we can, if we need to work with two numbers, we get one, we put it in the registry, and then we get another one, and then we work with the current one and the one in the registry. We can't use two numbers at the same time in a processor. This is why we have registries and why it's put there, so it's really fast to access. Don't really worry about this very much. It's not very important for now. Apart from the registries, we have these two green boxes, which are L1. L1 means level 1, and these are, after the registry, the first level where data is stored. And obviously, it's going to be a bit slower to access than the registry, because in order to access the L1 cache, it's called the L1 cache, and uh, not just L1. Um, the L1 cache is you need to search it in order to access the data in it because you don't know where it is. Whereas the register, the registries, you know where the data is. That's one of the interesting bits about it. That's why the L1 is a lot bigger. It stores a lot more data, but it also takes more time to access it. Um, and finally, we have L2 cache, which is a bigger L1 cache, essentially, and it takes more time to access it. The way it works is that ALU and FPU will see, okay, is the data we need in the registry? It's not, so let's go to the L1 cache and look for it. Or well, let's ask the control unit to tell us where the, the data is in the L1 cache. The control unit will search for the L1 cache to see if the data is there. It's not there. Okay, let's go to the L2 cache. 
So you see where it's going. If we had an L3 cache, which some processors do, then that would take even longer because we'd have to go through the registry L1, L2, and then L3 cache. And it might not even be there. So we'd have to go to the RAM then, which you've seen is another part of the computer. So this is why it's uh, really interesting, this architecture of the processor. And this leads very nicely into the next thing I wanted to tell you. Many times when you're buying a processor, you'll see, oh, this processor has 3.4 gigahertz. It must be an amazing processor because it has 3.4 gigahertz or 4 gigahertz. Oh my god. But actually, gigahertz is not everything. I've told you that if data is not found in the registry, you have to go to the L1 cache or the L2 cache or the L3 cache to find it. What do you think is going to take more time? Adding 5 and 5 or 1 and 1 or looking through registries L1, L2, and L3 cache until you find the data. I'd say looking through the cache in order to find the data is going to take longer. This is why many computers will say, we have 4 gigahertz, which means we can execute 4 billion instructions per second, but how long is it going to take you to find the data that is used in those instructions? So more important than the gigahertz is will oftentimes be the amount of cache they have, the, the size of the cache. A 4 gigahertz processor with 1 megabyte of L1 cache is not going to be anywhere near as good as a 3 gigahertz processor with 6 megabytes L1 cache. It's 6 times more memory and potentially a 600% decrease in the time it takes to find data. This is going to be a lot faster than increasing 1 billion operations per second. So you just think about that when you're buying your next computer and take a look at the processor and see if you can um, get told how much cache it has. Anyway, that was just a small aside. Um, so I hope you found this interesting. This is not really going to be necessary for your um, learning of programming, but I hope it tells you a bit about how the computer works. There's just one instruction at a time and there's comparison, and there's addition, and subtraction. That's pretty much it. Um, so think about it. If the processor is designed in this way, it is very likely programming languages are going to be designed in similar ways. So stick with that thought for now. And when we start programming, you'll see what I mean. Okay, let's move on to the next lecture. We're going to be studying the random access memory.